Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Property Management 101, and for today's video, we're gonna be discussing why negative cash flow can be a good thing. This situation is much more common on the single family side of the industry, but there are scenarios and situations that I'll be discussing today that can apply to multifamily assets as well. Usually if you're in a situation where you're in a negative cash flow and it's looked upon as a good thing, it's probably gonna be part of the strategy that is coming from the top down. So ownership and investments are aware of this, they're okay with it, it's part of their strategy, and here are four situations to keep in mind of when it could be a good thing. Number one, renovation. So if the asset is going through a renovation or is going through a renovation in the near future that requires the residents to be leaving during that time and maybe you're giving a non-renewal to them or maybe you're not extending their month-to-month -month lease, things like that, it could be a situation where you're falling into a negative cash flow situation for that owner. Now, this is something that could be planned as we are upgrading the unit to possibly achieve higher rents down the road. And this is something that's really common when it comes to a negative cash flow situation. So that owner or investor is looking to forgive any type of income or positive cash flow at that point to later then down the road, maybe achieve higher rents, higher cash flow potential down the road because of that upgrade and renovation. The second common situation that I have seen where a negative cash flow could be something that's a good thing for that owner investor is a situation that I refer to as confidence in the market. So I have seen situations where an investor will buy a home despite the mortgage on it or the amount of money they're putting into the home. The investor may be, for example, still in a negative cash flow position. And let's just say for an example purposes, two to three hundred dollars a month. Now, this could be a situation where that investor is saying, this is a great market. This home appreciation is very strong and very likely. The rents have really good growth, a good trajectory going upward in that particular market. And because of these situations, the owner or investor may be saying, hey, I'm okay with negative cash flow right now because I know my rents are going up. I know the market's strong and I am very confident in our ability in the future to get more cash flow down the road, even if we're in a negative position right now. So it may be something that owner or investor is willing to live with for a short time frame to then have later greater trade outs down the road. If you're enjoying this video so far and learning something new, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos. The third common situation that I have seen that puts the asset in a negative cash flow position that's actually a good thing for that owner and investor strategy is in a situation where they're testing the market. So oftentimes in a single family home, you may have an occupant that's there for five, 10, 15 years. And during that time, the market may have dramatically changed, right? Where the rents have really gone up, where the market's very strong. And this is common we've seen in the past 24 months in the industry. So it's something to keep in mind where, hey, we may, when we put this unit back on the market, we're gonna be testing rents that are much higher than we've seen in the past or the resident was currently paying on their previous lease. So due to this, you may see longer than expected vacancy that you haven't seen in the past that may position the asset to be in a position for a period of time that's in a negative cash flow position. So this is something that, hey, we're willing to forgive some additional vacancy loss in the short term for long-term positive growth when it comes to our much higher rents that we're seeing because we're testing in a position that we really haven't been able to test before because we've had an occupant in the unit for such a long period of time. The last situation that may be very common in the industry to see a negative cash flow position be a good thing is due to tax reasons. Depending what the investors have going on, maybe with other investments they have, or maybe their full-time employment or any other businesses they're running, and that investor may want to take the, some losses on paper to help their tax position overall. They may be working with a tax accountant that may say, hey, you need to take some losses here. You know, this the amount of loss that we may achieve here may save you more in the long run from a tax position. For example, if an owner may be losing, let's say $500 a month for the final four months of the year, that $2,000 loss may actually equal a lot more money in tax savings they have when they file taxes after that year. 
So it's something to keep in mind when you're a property manager working with an owner that you may be doing things that you know that may result in a negative cash flow position for that owner, but they may have a longer or bigger viewpoint where they know that they accept that and they know that actually will benefit more than you think as a property manager it will. So it is one of those things to keep in mind is you may not have the full story. And this is why I think the dynamic between owners and property managers that full transparency is always the best to ensure everyone's on the same page because you do want to have a situation where that property manager is always in line with the goal and strategy of that asset. To recap this video today, keep in mind these four situations that are common when negative cash flow can be a good thing. Number one, if any renovations are gonna be done at the property currently or in the near future. Number two, you wanna keep in mind confidence in the market. Just because it's a negative cash flow position now doesn't mean it will be from two to three to five years from now. Number three, testing the market. So this could be a situation where you haven't had the opportunity to really test and push the market in a long period of time since the asset has last been vacant. And number four, tax reasons. So keep in mind, when it comes to this asset, there could be positions by that owner taking a negative cash flow position. It may help them out more from a tax position in other areas. I hope you found this information helpful and learned something new. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos. And if you haven't watched my Why I Do This or my Disclosure video, please make sure you watch that before putting any of these practices into play. If you have any questions about this video or any of my videos, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to address it for you. And if you haven't already connected to our LinkedIn and our Instagram page, please make sure you do so for industry news, polls, and video releases. Happy leasing.